Get ready. On March 4th, 1995, Disneyland would unveil a brand new attraction. This intense dark ride would become a staple in the park's lineup and would eventually become a Disney classic. Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye would provide an edge that Disneyland needed, offering a more thrilling dark ride experience the resort hadn't seen before. Equipped with custom manufactured ride vehicles, deep storytelling, an interactive queue line, and amazing special effects, this ride would be a smash hit for all theme park fanatics. In today's video, we take a look at the many reasons as to why this ride is so good. Get ready. The History Disney CEO Michael Eisner was placed at the helm in September 1984, put in charge of rejuvenating Disney. In the years leading up to his presidency, Disney was in quite a slump. The film studio had released a number of forgettable films throughout the 70s and 80s, while the parks never seemed to add anything new or groundbreaking. Michael Eisner's reign during the 90s would be known as the Disney Decade, thanks to the refreshing of the company. Great box office and critical success came from many of the films during this era, which is commonly referred to as Disney's Renaissance period. Films like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King all went on to make huge money for the company, as well as many critical accolades. With the film studio in line, the parks would also see some updates, with the inclusion of various new attractions outside of the traditional Disney media realm. Eisner was a fan of Walt's mantra that Disneyland would never be completed, and Eisner was very much open to the idea that the parks needed to be rebranded to fit a more modern and edgy marketplace, as well as aiming it towards teens. This came about as he used his own teenage son as a litmus test to decide what the teenage demographic wanted. This often was not always the most thought out idea though. Just take a look at what they did to the people mover in Disneyland. Rocket Rods was a ginormous mistake. However, this did form the basis for some concepts that many Disney fans still love today, such as Tower of Terror and Splash Mountain, or at least in its current state. But this also opened the door to include the use of licensed intellectual properties in the parks, which brings us to Lucasfilm. George Lucas had always been a fan of Disney parks, and his family apparently attended Disneyland in 1955 during its opening week. Eisner and Lucas had already some sort of established relationship as Raiders of the Lost Ark was distributed through Paramount during Eisner's time as president and CEO of the company. Disney and Lucas had joined a partnership together and helped spawn a number of new attractions, starting with Captain EO in 1986, which George wrote and executively produced. Walt Disney Imagineering then later brought the Star Tours concept to Lucas, which he would then give approval to. Star Tours was opened in Disneyland in 1987 and was subsequently opened in Disney's MGM Studios in 1989. Before this opened in the Florida park, however, MGM Studios also featured another Lucasfilm attraction based on the Indiana Jones franchise. Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular opened on August 25th, 1989, and is still a prominent fixture in the current Hollywood Studios lineup. This would pave the way for the attraction we all know and love today, Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Forbidden Eye. The Story If you've seen some of our other videos in this series, it'll be no surprise that we love a good story. Storytelling is the foundation for all theme parks. It's through the vision, design, features and attractions found in a theme park that helps solidify guests in a different world. Indiana Jones Adventure is no different to other attractions we've covered so far. The story is paramount and helps differentiate itself from other dark rides. The ride itself takes place in 1935 India. Indiana Jones has reunited several missing pieces of a map that shows the exact location of an ancient Bengalese temple known as the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. The temple was buried over 2000 years ago and was expected to be lost forever. The temple deity, Mara, offers visitors one of three gifts, earthly riches, eternal youth, or visions of the future. Visitors can only receive one of these gifts and under one strict condition, they must never gaze into the eyes of Mara. Unfortunately for Indiana Jones, his archeological funding has started to dry up. In order to generate more revenue for the excavation, Salah starts providing guided tours to people willing to voyage into the temple. Many of these tourists have reaped the benefits of Mara's gifts, although some have never returned from the temple. Indiana Jones ventures inside once again to find a tourist, although he has not yet reappeared after seven days. Marcus Brody has requested Salah to continue the tours in the hope of finding Dr. Jones again, and we're one of the lucky visitors. The Queue Line A good queue line helps establish the overall experience of the attraction. It's something we've made a point of throughout this series. Similar to Flight of Passage, Indiana Jones Adventure features a huge and immersive line filled with interesting and interactive elements. These don't just serve the purpose to keep you mildly entertained while you wait, but also outline and immerse you in a story the ride wants you to partake in. In order to reach the loading station, riders need to go on their own adventure through the outdoor base camp, past actual props used in the films. A noisy generator powers the lights that further lead into the dark temple. Once inside the temple, guests will notice symbols or petroglyphs that line the walls. Originally, riders were provided with decoder cards which helped outline what each of the symbols meant. 
These are still given on special occasions today, although decoders can still be found using a quick Google image search too. The markings warn visitors to the temple of the rewards that can be found within, but also of the dangers. This elaborate setup allows for a unique and interactive way to portray story elements. It gives writers the chance to feel like they're unearthing a secret message that many don't know about, and this concept is still used today when we look at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's a cool concept and adds certain depth to the narrative and experience. The temple is also filled with references to Indiana Jones films. One created particular found within the temple is marked with the number 9906753, which is a direct reference to the crate that holds the Ark of the Covenant and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Another is marked Delivered to Club Obi-Wan, which is a reference to the fictional club in Temple of Doom, which of course is also a reference to Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. The queue also features interactive booby trap sections, which are very reminiscent of the source material. In one particular section, the ceiling is comprised of several spikes. Bamboo poles help support the ceiling. However, visitors can push or pull the main support beam and the ceiling will slowly lower, moving the spikes towards people waiting in line. In another section, a dangling rope also interacts when pulled. Guests can hear an out of sight archaeologist responding when you pull the rope. Although the queue deploys several interesting and interactive features to keep writers entertained, it plays a more subtle psychological role in creating a story. The half mile length queue starts off bright in the outdoors before delving us deeper into a dark and narrow temple. It doesn't feature switchbacks, instead it constantly keeps guests moving deeper and deeper into the cave and into various rooms. This helps solidify the adventurous tones of the attraction while also helping us forget that we're actually queuing. It's almost a walkthrough attraction in and of itself. The line becomes its own adventure and never fully reveals what's in store for the ride. It all feels quite ominous. You never have a clear line of sight towards the station. You've no real mental map as to where you came from and how you got here. You begin to feel distant from Disneyland and more out of your comfort zone as you progress. The deeper you go, the more you begin to feel lost. The Vehicle During the production of the ride, several different concepts were conceived. Some of these ideas consisted of a walkthrough attraction, as well as a high-speed minecart coaster. There were also early plans to incorporate the Jungle Cruise as a part of the attraction. The Jungle Cruise would have acted somewhat as a shuttle to bring guests over to the attraction loading area in order to avoid long queues. The development of the ride would be led by Imagineer and Disney legend Tony Baxter. Baxter had previously led projects such as Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, the original Journey into Imagination, as well as the whole of Disneyland Paris. It was in good hands to say the least. The concept definitively settled on a dark ride attraction, bringing riders to the aid of the lost Dr. Jones. Indiana Jones Adventure used a first of its kind attraction car known as an Enhanced Motion Vehicle or EMV, which was designed specifically for this attraction. The body of the car is attached to the chassis by three hydraulic rams. This allows the shell of the car to move independently of the slot track below. An onboard computer chooses several pre-programmed intensity options to simulate various forms of movement for the car to perform along the track. Despite moving along a smooth and flat road, the frame of the car can jolt, shudder, tilt, ascend and descend on top of the vehicle's frame. Even though the top speed of the attraction is only 14 miles per hour, the independent movement of the car along the track makes for a much more intense experience and provide an illusion of speed. This simulation allows to give varying textures and terrains which really adds to the immersive qualities of the attraction. You definitely wouldn't have the same experience if you felt like you were just moving along a flat surface. The motion provides riders with a more intense and enjoyable experience. It also adds a lot of characters to ride, and is also used in tandem with some of the practical effects to really give a multi-sensory experience unlike anything seen at the time. The Ride Experience Riders board troop transport in groups of 12, divided by three rows of four seats. The cars dispatch the station and voyage around the corner before entering the Chamber of Destiny. This is where we find out our fate as to which gift Mara has bestowed onto us. We are presented with three doors, each representing the different gifts. One door begins to glow, featuring projection mappings to give a specific illusion for the gift we have received. If we receive the gift of eternal youth, corroded metal doors are rinsed by a purifying water. The lighting in the Hall of Promises then changes to a mystical aqua blue lighting effect as the doors open. If riders receive the gift of earthly riches, gold coins rain down over the door, while the lighting effects change to a shimmering gold inside. Lastly, if Mara decides to provide riders with Observatory of the Future, the all-seeing eyes glow above, melting and whisking away icy cobwebs across the door. The lighting inside the next hall is a deep purple with fiber optic stars covering the ceilings. This added feature of different outcomes adds to the mystical quality of the ride. We don't know which gift we will receive and what effects we will witness during the introduction to our adventure. It's slight differences in ride layouts that give extra rewritability while also adding a unique aspect to each experience. 
But fortunately for us though, regardless of what gift we are given, a rider in our vehicle will always gaze into the eyes of Mara. You know, the exact opposite of what we were told to do. The cars approach the idol of Mara in the hall and he gives us a scowled expression featuring more projection mapping lights giving us varying different effects depending on the gift we were supposed to receive. If we were due to receive eternal youth, the marble stone begins to crack in age and his eyes fade to a deep black. For earthly riches, the gold of his face begins to melt from an acidic-like liquid before the eyes turn copper red. And for visions of the future, the face begins to pulse while a storm builds in the third eye gem in his headdress while lightning bolts strike his eyes. Riders are told their path now leads towards the gates of doom. The transport takes a sharp turn into a crumbling corridor. Using the motion base of the vehicle, the car feels like it's starting to levitate towards the gates of doom. Lightning effects illuminate the gates while an audio animatronic Indiana Jones attempts to hold the doors shut. As he shuts the doors, the transport suddenly descends, symbolizing that we might actually be back on track. Jones tells us to proceed up a set of stairs to our left. The vehicle accelerates as we begin to ascend the steps. When we emerge from the passage, we teeter on the edge of a deep lava pit. A rope bridge arches across the pit, hanging from a crumbling ceiling. Another vehicle carrying riders is seen bounding over the bridge. It all feels quite precarious, and yet it's perfectly timed. This is the first time we see other riders during our journey, and hints towards the adventure we are yet to go on. This is a nice setup that adds to the anticipation of the ride. On the far wall of the temple is a 45 foot tall stone face of Mara. Green beams project from his eyes, causing flames to erupt within certain parts of the cavern. The vehicle takes another turn left, entering catacombs that are lined with skeletal remains which jump out towards the car. This catacomb also has false pathways, portraying that there are several routes in the temple. This gives the illusion and false sense of perception that the temple is much bigger than it actually is. We potentially could be following the wrong path, further getting lost. These additions are almost subconsciously picked up by riders. It's not something you actively notice, but the effect on your understanding of where you are and where you're going adds to the perilous feeling of the ride. The vehicle takes another left into a pitch black passageway. Our headlights flicker before eventually revealing thousands of beetles are crawling the walls. The beetles hiss as blasts of air are directed towards the vehicle. This is a physical sensation you can feel and is definitely quite jarring on your first ride. For many, this can cause quite a moment of panic. Again, this ride showcases another special effect that works perfectly in this scenario. When in the dark, you don't know what's around you. This keeps you guessing as to what else is in store. We accelerate out of the passageway, back into the light, where we are now back in the main temple room. We begin to venture over the rope bridge that we originally saw as we entered the room. The motion simulation of the vehicle makes us feel like we may just fall through the bridge into the lava at any second. We stall as another transport vehicle comes towards us. It turns away just before reaching the bridge. Again, this is another timed execution based on the ride design, further hinting as to what is to come for us. We accelerate as the vehicle jostles over the remainder of the bridge. The eyes of the stone Mara shoot more beams in an attempt to destroy the bridge, but we just make it across before turning right. Hundreds of snakes cover the walls of the next room, and a huge audio animatronic cobra appears to the right of the vehicle, striking at the riders. For anyone with a big fear of snakes, good luck. As we leave, we head towards the rope bridge, but we're stopped as another vehicle is attempting to cross us. We take another sharp turn, this time to the right, traveling behind the stone of Mara. The next room is filled with 1,995 skulls, based on the year the ride opened, while the ghost of Mara appears from above the vehicle. We make our way down towards another rope bridge below the one we originally crossed. Bursts of fire illuminate across the lava pit as we accelerate into the dark cavern. Squeaks from rats can be heard as we stall in front of a hanging tree root. Rats can be seen crawling across us. The vehicle bursts into another acceleration, going through the roots of the tree. We enter another dimly lit tunnel with paintings of skeleton warriors on either side. Blasts of air hit riders as if they are darts flying past our heads, and audio cues can be heard playing the sound of the effect of the arrows hitting the vehicle. This feels like a real life booby trap room that you only really get to see in films and video games. It's a very cool effect that feels quite real. The vehicle enters another dark room for the finale of the attraction. Indiana Jones appears hanging on a rope from above the vehicle. He requests that we turn on our headlights so we can climb aboard. As the lights turn on, it illuminates a massive rolling boulder making its way directly towards us. The vehicle backs up as to try and get away, but at the last second accelerates as if the floor has given way and we dive down into a chamber below. A resounding shudder can be felt as if the boulder has just crashed into the wall. This particular scene uses huge practical effects to give the impression that you might be crushed. The wall surrounding the room actually move backward while the boulder spins in place, fitted with special lighting that gives a sense that it's rolling towards you. Imagineer Tony Baxter said the idea for this came when sitting in a car wash one day. 
When your fixed point of observation moves when you don't expect it to, it gives an illusion that you're actually moving. Based on previous points of reference, our brain has a hard time imagining that the walls are moving, as this shouldn't happen. Our brain then processes this by telling us that we're the ones actually moving. The vehicle also helps as it tips backwards, and sound effects give a sense that the car is moving, which are very much stationary until you accelerate down the hill below the bowler. The vehicle swerves right and you see Dr. Jones standing in front of the cracked bowler, as he gives us a parting quip, sometimes to the effect of, not bad for tourists. We hear a final triumphant refrain from the original film soundtrack as we enter back into the station to disembark the ride. Final thoughts. Indiana Jones Adventure is one of the greatest dark rides of all time. The exact ride was essentially recreated for Disney's Animal Kingdom with a different theme for Dinosaur. But Indiana Jones Adventure is still the better attraction. Dinosaur is a great ride in its own right, but this probably highlights how certain details add to the overall experience of an attraction. The immersive qualities and the attention to detail of Indiana Jones Adventure really makes it a standout attraction. Despite the technicalities being pretty much the exact same, you really feel in a different world on Indiana Jones. The effective queue line and in-ride special effects have become a staple feature for many headline attractions in Disney parks. Universal also used very similar features in a potential future episode attraction, Revenge of the Mummy. We all go to theme parks to experience something. This attraction takes you on an adventure from start to finish and makes you forget about where you are. It fully achieves this, and it really is for this reason that Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye is a good ride. Thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out some of the other videos in this series. We also have episodes on Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom and Crush's Coaster in Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris. We also have loads of other videos featuring tips, tricks, and hidden gems from theme parks across the globe. So make sure to give us a subscribe, because we put out videos every week. You can also check out our website and social media pages for more theme park articles, lists, and quizzes. We'll leave links in the description below. And now you're ready.